see the problem. What's up guys? Welcome to this video. Unfortunately, when we started this project, somehow I lost the footage of what this wall looked like and how we got it pulled back. There's actually a board across the front. They've already taken that down. But the main thing about this video is not how we got the wall pulled back. It was actually very simple. We positioned the machine up on the top of the hill, reached over, grabbed this little wall, which is maybe 15 feet long and three to four feet high, and just pulled it back. It was actually out to about right here. So it was definitely in danger of falling on over. The cause was they brought some dirt down here and it just put too much pressure on it and pushed this wall out much like this one. But this one's not near as bad. That one's actually almost level. The purpose of this video is how we anchored it. And it was pretty much the same process as if we had built this wall and anchored it from the start. If this was a big, huge wall, this would have been very difficult and dangerous to get the wall pulled back if it was even possible. Luckily with a small wall like this, it is possible. So you guys enjoy the video. Please, please, please comment and let us know if you enjoyed how I did this video. I know everybody wanted, would have wanted to see the excavator pull this wall back, but it really wasn't any big deal at all. Now that we have used the excavator to remove quite a bit of dirt from behind the wall, you'll see me bring in three bags. Each bag is full of concrete. You can acquire these at any hardware store. Common brand is Sacrete, and you can get this in regular setting or fast setting. I like using fast setting because within a few minutes of wetting it down, it's set up rock hard. Now the next step is to take each piece of rebar that's been pushed through the wall and push it into and through each bag of concrete, which after it sets up, will hold on to the rebar tightly. You'll now see me going from one bag to the next, cutting the tops of them open with a shovel giving us access to spray water into the concrete, causing it to set up more quickly. Now I'm going ahead and using the excavator to cover these concrete bags up. I've pushed the rebar all the way through them and with the weight of the dirt pressing down on the bags of concrete, it's gonna help compress that concrete and make it even more firm once it's set up. You can see me using the bucket once I've put dirt on top of the bags just to pack them down a little bit for extra measure. It's the weight of the dirt pressing down on the concrete bags and the dirt that gets between the bag and the wall that actually turns these bags of concrete into concrete block anchors. Now in this part of the time lapse, we've covered the bags of concrete up with dirt and I am tamping the dirt along the back of the wall, making a bed that actually angles back about six to eight inches away from the wall. And in that trough is where I just laid the perforated pipe. Now me and Emma are using the Kubota tractor with loader. We're gonna take two buckets of the pea gravel, each bucket weighing about 2,000 pounds worth of gravel onto the top of this four inch perforated pipe. The gravel will let water come through it and into the perforated pipe, which will carry the water out to the end of the retaining wall instead of saturating the ground behind the wall. Now you will see me and the customer placing this green material over top of the gravel. 
the green material has many, many perforations in it that will allow water to seep through, but not necessarily allow a lot of the dirt that we're gonna cover it with to get through it and clog the gravel. I love these projects where I get to take Emma along with me and teach her some of the tricks of the trade, but just as much I enjoyed working with this customer who was gracious and extremely friendly, and we left this job feeling like we had made a friend. You guys can see that once the concrete bag anchors were put in the back and the rebar was put through the holes, homeowner actually drilled holes in these plates, placed them over the rebar and welded them into place. And that's what's gonna hold this wall in, in place. We did decide to leave this wall leaning back slightly to encourage it to stay back. And as it rains, it will have a little bit more and more pressure put on it. So if anything, it's gonna end up true. Thank you guys for watching and again, it helps me a lot for you guys to comment whether you like the video or not let me know what you think i enjoyed this project thank y'all for joining me and we'll see you on the next one have a great day